certain dislocations in the markets. I think it's either the bond market is right or the stock market is right, and I will go with the bond market. So today we're going to look at the reaction, and what I mean by reaction is the close of the markets after the news, so after the CPI data. For me, very interesting, very interesting stuff. So let's look at the S&P. The S&P did reach higher, but it closed still within the descending line, so we're still not out of the woods in terms of closing beyond the descending. The NASDAQ, similar, it tagged the top of the descending, didn't close above it. Okay, we're still bullish, but uh, we didn't close above the descending. Dow Jones, same sort of thing. It's not a descending, it's a horizontal resistance point. You could even say it's up here. Didn't close above it, actually had a red day today. In fact, the NASDAQ was the only one that was green. The Russell, which basically unchanged, it has closed above the descending, but that was actually done the day before. That was on Monday. So for me, it's sideways bullish, but we're hitting resistance. And I would really not be surprised if we go down today. However, we have news again. We have retail sales, also the Empire State Manufacturing, but I think it's really the retail sales. And I think we're going to go down. I think we're going to have a red day. Now, the stock market is nice and cute. We are still bullish high. I can't believe we're this high still, but it's the bond market. Let me go straight to yields. I'm only spending one or two minutes on the stock market because it's really about yields. Actually, just before I do, the VIX, look at this, just smashed down 7%. Doesn't make sense. I mean, you could even argue it should be sideways green today after, you know, basically the markets were unchanged i mean the nasdaq was up three quarters of a percent but the rest was sort of unchanged the dow was down half a percent i don't understand why the vix is down more than one percent other than the fact that the vix is totally broken now it did, it did go all the way back down and tag the descending line that is typical of after a breakout of the descending to go back and test it and then go back up at least go back up and see if you can take out your old high which will be around here 22 but to go all the way back down 7% makes no sense. Besides the fact that the VIX is broken, but still, this is still not a valid excuse. So I don't understand the VIX. So let's ignore the VIX. So again, I still think that the markets should go down, not only because they're overextended and at resistance, but also because, because of retail sales. And I remember, was it last week or the week before, there, was, there were two news events and the first news event sent the market one way and the next news event sent it the other way. And I really wouldn't be surprised if that happens again. Having said that, let's go straight to yields. Yields, one year. Look at this. These are my old markings. I can delete them because we've basically done it. We've just gone all the way up. And we are at the old high with, with a stronger close. I mean, this this one uh, candle here doesn't even count. I mean, tablet, And this may even be a bit of an error. Sometimes you have some fat finger or some sort of algorithm failure in one of the markets but who cares about that the point is we screamed to new highs and closed above it went sideways up which is exactly what i expected this is the one year and i should look at the six month it's probably even higher i mean this indicates chaos ahead for me for anyone looking at it who understands it more important is the two year the two year look at this candle I, i'm doing this on a sorry i'm doing this on wednesday very early morning here in Europe. But I mean, look at the close. Cause I mean, you've, you've got a crazy candle, you've got a big wick, and this is typical when you have a news event. You know, if you look at any significant news event, such as retail sales that will come out, you always have a whipsaw. So you could, and I've always said this, you could almost buy before the market, uh, before the news comes out or short before the news comes out. And you should be able to either cover or sell in profit. It's it's really strange how it's almost every single time a news event comes out that it's just whips or if I go to the three three minute chart, look at this. You know, you've just got a massive blue candle, sorry, green candle, up it goes, and it goes all the way back down to absolute low and comes all the way back up to new highs. And this is just I don't know. I mean, you could day trade this. You could just become a day trader and, and day trade significant news event and just live off that <laughs> it's probably possible uh, i wonder why i'm not doing it anyway daily chart so the two-year massive candle close visibly higher than the horizontal support uh, resistance 
today today we may just drift sideways maybe maybe even a bit red but i think the damage is done i've been looking forward to this sort of a move i was talking about the close above this resistance here and now let's look at the five year similar sort of thing massive candle we didn't close above the horizontal resistance but remember the two year is the is the yield that the fed essentially chases either on the way up or on the way down and things were looking good as we were sort of nearing 4%. People were talking about going below 4%. Now we're talking, we should be talking about going back to the old highs, 4.9%. And this means rates go up. And if rates go up, we know that the market should go down. Maybe with a small delay, but it should happen. You know, what, what happens when the Fed comes out and announces higher rates, higher rate increases for longer? I think that will shock the market and, and go down. In fact, it shouldn't even shock the market. They should just be seeing it here. So I don't understand why the stock market's not reacting to this. And I don't think it's the yield, the, the bond market that's wrong. So I think there's a bit of a exuberance and, you know, bulls think they're geniuses just because the market's going up. But yeah, let's look at the five year. That's also tagged. That's hor that horizontal. So here I expect what essentially what my old markings say, although we've kind of done it already sideways and actually even higher beyond this horizontal resistance to 10 year. Again, horizontal higher. You know, we're going to inch forward. I'm not sure about today because we had a bit of a move yesterday, but, you know, we've had quite a few green days. We could, we could just step, staircase our way all the way back up. 30 year. Yeah, that's a bit more muted, actually. But what really counts, in my opinion, is the shorter term yields. Let's look at Europe very quickly, too. That also had a similar day. Look at that. It's the exact same candle. So, you know, staircase up and then maybe even break out very, very soon. This is just one or two weeks away from new highs. And I think it's pretty alarming stuff. It's basically the German yield, the French yield, same thing. Look at that, exact same thing. Italian yield, same thing. Maybe just a little behind, one or two days behind. The British yields, which came all the way back down, if you remember, after that saga a few, what is it, months ago now. Look at this coming all the way back up. That's the third year, the 10 year. As soon as we clear this sort of 3.8 on the 10 year and four on the 30 year, you know, the next level is essentially the old highs and then what everyone's going to be talking about yields again so yields for me just remain the most important thing especially the two year the us two year and the eu 10 year you know, just to summarize the eu yield problem let's look at the dollar the dollar again okay the dollar wasn't as strong as the yields but you know another hammer it wasn't a red day it was just a sideways day, and today we're creeping up, but it's a bit it's a bit early to talk about today. I still think we're going to just tag, take out this descending close above four, and run straight to 105.5, you know, which means essentially that, just like yields. This is essentially the same chart as yields with a small delay, the way I see it. So I don't think the, unlike yields, though, I think yields will make new highs. I mean, like the one year has already done essentially the one year has made new highs but i don't think the dollar will make new highs i think it will go higher much higher but i think it will sort of fail uh you know in several weeks maybe so that's the dollar let's look at commodities commodities was pretty interesting we had a, a bit of a difference between different commodities so let's start with copper okay copper was also slightly green it's really sideways. It's, it's difficult to call for me. Copper, I just feel like it will come back down. I do feel like copper will just sort of go sideways and come back down with the market. So, but yeah, I'm going to call it a sideways day. Natural gas, however, you know, I was very, very bullish natural gas on this Friday. And then the next, on Monday, the next week, Monday, next trading day, it just came all the way back down. And I, and I said, that was very surprising. I didn't expect that. I thought the breakout was on. And then lo and behold, we have that breakout Oops. the next day. So yesterday we had natural gas just completely. I want to call that a breakout because it's just, it closed at a higher day, it closed above the last couple of trading days. And for me, we've, we've broken out of this descending. So yesterday we could have sideways down, but this is 
on for a run to i don't know what what level first because there aren't that many levels here maybe the old 3.5 you could say 3.5 should have been support and it wasn't so it might be resistance so i think we're going to run to 3.5 in natural gas quite quickly i think people will just short cover i think there'll be momentum traders day traders and just general chases so natural gas should run to 3.5 a nice 35 percent move i don't know how long that'll take but i really expect that oil yeah just sideways middle of the range i wouldn't trade this i would definitely buy down here though I would buy down here, and if it keeps going low, I'd add. Oil for me is a good long-term trade, especially down here. Gold and silver. I mean, you see how news just ruins it. It gives you these false signals, and then today already, we're, we're testing the lows. So for me, remember, I think yields go up, dollar goes up, market goes down. I think gold goes down. I think we need to tag 1830, maybe even 1800. So... I mean, if I was doing a video immediately after the close yesterday, I would probably just say that I expect sideways action because this isn't bullish when you close so much lower than the, the high of day. But again, macro thinking, I just feel like yields and dollar goes up and gold can't really go up in those conditions. They could actually, but I don't think they will. At the moment, it seems to trend with the market and in an opposite direction from the dollar and yields. So I think we'll drift lower silver that was actually quite bearish yesterday i mean gold was and usually on news people go to gold but yeah silver is quite bearish and in a bearish situation silver leads the way down um so i think we're going to continue i think silver will keep going lower if gold goes to 1800 silver maybe towards 21 i mean i've drawn these levels a, a long time ago and i've said this a long time ago so i'm sticking with that forecast finally Look at the miners. The miners followed more the market than the metal yesterday. And the GDX really did tag this ascending channel very well. So actually slightly bullish. Normally, if, if I didn't know what was happening in gold, silver, yield, dollar market, I'd say this is a buy. But because I know what's happening, because I think this will follow the market lower and in an opposite direction from yields and the dollar and will follow the metals lower, I can't be bullish this. I mean, the maximum I would be bullish is up until this sort of the GDX 30, 31 maximum, not even 31. You know, it could sort of, if somehow the markets keep going up, which is just ridiculous, but it could sort of go there and then fail the ascending. But what I really expect is, to be honest, just a flush straight away, because although this is a lovely candle engulfing reversal on the ascending i just it's the macros and and not just the macro you know it's it's just the fact that i expect the dollar and yields to continue their move immediately or any day now you know that they could take one or two day break but then go lower so i really expect either an instant drop which is a shame because it's a nice candle and i'm bullish the sector or just sideways up one or two days and then a drop so yeah, because of what's happening elsewhere, I have to be bearish GDX, despite the lovely candle GDXJ. Same sort of candle, you know, nice reversal, perfect reversal candle, to be honest, where it tested lower, tested higher than yesterday's, you know, the the, the Monday candle, closed above at high of day, just perfect reversal engulfing. Tagged, by the way, tagged the ascending support, closed below it. That's neither bullish nor bearish. It's just typical that you touch it at least after breaking below it, just as the vice versa is true um, on the opposite side. But again, you know, because I expect the dollar yields to go up and the market goes down, I just feel like this could go up a little bit and then flush back down here or just immediately flush. So I just can't be bullish on my favorite sector. Having said that, I did chase one or two stocks yesterday. I think it was Goldfields, a little bit of EXK, a little bit of First Majestic, just because I'll be very, very quick to show this, just because of what their chart was doing. You know, so here, for example, I forgot where I bought it. I think it was 314, you know, sort of middle of the range, nothing special. For EXK, AG was 726. I remember that. That is just a real 
small trim buy, you know, stuff that I was selling all the way up here, just in case I'm wrong about what I've just said about GDXJ, because I saw how nice the reversal candles were. And I said, look, forget, forget what I think has happened to the dollar yields. I mean, what if, and it's possible, what if gold starts moving up with yields? And with the dollar, we've seen that before. It's not happening at the moment. I don't see why it would happen all of a sudden. But in case, I should at least buy something back since these huge drops because, because I will kick myself if I don't and because I'm that's the way I've been trading all this time, you know. So I sort of, it, it was very light buying. So I really still wanted to go lower, but I just thought I'd buy some of it back. So it was EXK, AG, GFI, that's Goldfields. Again, nice reversal candle. We come all the way back down. This is a super, uh, super strong stock. Look at this move up after abandoning the Yamana deal and also is going up very high before the crash to new highs. So for me, this is a great bounce play. Again, if it bounces, it'll be one or two days. I won't be selling. You know, if if the GDX and GXJ go up one or two days to, to 11, uh, you know, Goldfield goes to 11, I'm not going to trade this small, whatever it is, 10% move not even i'm looking for big moves so i would hope that there's a flush and then i can buy even more so this is not even for a quick trade it was goldfield first majestic fortuna and max silver i think it was max silver too yeah that one also came back down nice reversal that's it very small stuff nothing to speak of so small dichotomy i was buying the stocks despite you know what i've just said that i expected to go lower but that's the way I'm trading. I'm swing trading my long-term investments. But in this case, I was acting more in line with my long-term investment thesis, just add on the drop. So Bitcoin, honestly, haven't looked at Bitcoin. Haven't looked at Bitcoin. Look at that nice reversal candle. Actually, it's looking very similar to what I was expecting. A bounce here and then a drop. And you know what? I still expect that. Although you, I probably expect it to happen slightly sooner now because because Bitcoin's at its resistance and the markets are at resistance. So either they go higher, but I expect them to go lower. So that's it. Let's see, today will be equally crazy. You know, we'll probably have another candle where it screams higher and then ends lower. The news just ruins the chart, but, but it is what it is. And it's also quite fun. So let's see what happens. I am still bearish. Um, long term and bearish the news even though sometimes the stock market can react bullishly to the news i mean look the cpi print was hotter than expected so that means inflation is higher than you think so that means interest rates should stay higher than you think for longer so that means the market should go down but the market was sort of neither up nor down it was weird it's just it's all a bit weird but you know that's why you need to zoom out take a slightly longer term view and just remember your I think you're in a bear market and um, if rates go up, markets should go down. So anyway, good luck. Let's have another video later today.